J just a heads up before we begin, I'm going to ask the scouts uh, right when we open to come forward and lead us in the pledge, all right? Just so you know. Well, I... Well, I... This meeting is called to order in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Law. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided. This meeting of April 15, 2024 was published in the Courier News and Star Ledger and placed on the borough's website. Notice of this meeting was also placed on the bulletin board at Borough Hall. A copy of this notice is available to the public and a copy of this statement shall be included in the minutes of this meeting. Mayor Brian Gallagher. Here. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Here. Glenn Denis is excused this evening. Tom Mitchell. Here. Randy Pitts. Here. Gina Stravick. Here. Roger Verm. Here. All right. Uh, we have with us tonight uh, a whole group of uh, Boy Scouts, and I'd like to ask them to please come forward and help uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, can I have a motion for the approval of the minutes of February 20, 2024, and April 1, 2024? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Council members Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Vroom. Yes. All right, uh, Kevin, we have received some uh, 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 emails and, and some concern over some delays we've had uh, in putting out some of our minutes. Uh, it's uh, it's an, uh, not that delayed, but there is, has been a little bit of delay. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Just so people are aware. Sure, sure. And uh, one, one set you're voting on tonight, that was February 20th. So that's probably the latest one you've seen. The, I, I will tell you we've had some technical issues. And we also, we also utilized the cameras for the benefit of, of drafting the minutes. Um, so what happened was on the 20th of February, while it did the video, there was no audio. So we had to reconstruct those minutes by notes that we've had and other people have had. Um, in order to reconstruct those minutes. On March 18th, which you'll have for the next meeting, that particular video, that particular technology, if you recall, it shut off in the middle. It was the date of our budget presentation and picked up again. Um, last week we had that on the agenda, but what happened was, was there was a gap, and, and it, you'll, be, you'll get that revisited gap in, in next week's meeting. So, so it was really March 18th and, and February 20th. The only other prior time that you had it more than two weeks was the person that does the minutes was on vacation for a week. Right. Um, other than that, I, I will tell you, I don't know, 10 years, you usually actually get them the very next meeting. Our right. goal is to keep them in the same month. Yes. But we've been pretty good at keeping them the same meeting. It's unfortunate that we had kind of multiple issues within a, with a five or six meeting period, but that's, that's the extent of it. And I think we're beginning to have some multiple some issues again. So, so Mike uh, was working on it. Is what what's happening there is is that the server room is overheating, um, and we had a fan installed on Friday, uh, and uh, so right now we're just trying to keep the temperature down on, on that server in order for that to uh, yeah. Not my, to overheat. my my concern is that we're I, I I don't know if YouTube is still broadcasting because it keeps blinking in and out right now. Uh, it is. We're still broadcasting. Yeah, I okay. see. It. it may be also blinking on the YouTube, because um, it's delayed, so I can't, I mean, I'll be able to tell you right now. Right. Um, but but you would just have the blink on the YouTube. Um, but it, it is it is still live. Yeah, my, my big concern is, is making sure that we have the audio. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so thank you for that explanation. So, so obviously we've had some uh, growing pains with technology. Uh, it's a new facility that we're in, and uh, um, as the technology uh, expands, 
Uh, it helps us in certain areas, and it's a learning curve in others. So we ask that you be patient, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll attempt to work those, uh, those bugs out. Departmental reports and notices are as listed. Uh, committee reports. Uh, let's start over here to my right. Uh, Teresa. Uh, well, oops, sorry. Uh, unfortunately, the Municipal Alliance and Youth Services Commission meeting was canceled this month, so I don't have anything to report uh, from there. And the next uh, Library Board of Trustees meeting is on April 25th at 6.30 p.m., and I will be attending that, so hopefully I'll have a report for you the next meeting. Great. Okay. Thank you. Randy. Yes. Still is. In DSA news, Restaurant Week starts this weekend, Sunday, April 21st, and will go through Saturday, April 27th. This event will feature dining deals, shopping discounts, and special events. Following up after Restaurant Week is the return of the much-anticipated Girls' Night Out, Thursday, May 16th, 5 to 9 p.m. This year's event theme is 80s versus 90s, with events related to that theme. Participants are asked to dress up in their best 80 or 90s styles. Sponsorship opportunities are still available for this event. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gina. The um, Health Department, um, the Health Commission uh, will be represented uh, at the Green Fair on April 20th, that's Saturday. Um, Regarding my report from the Somerville Rescue Squad, um, they continue to be actively answering calls. The uh, latest news from them is that their fund drive is starting. Um, so you can donate at www.54rescue.org. So I ask you to be generous. Um, the squad goes out and, and takes care of our community and, and uh, if they could use your help. Um, I'm also reporting today for Glenn uh, Denise on the Environmental Commission. Uh, very busy month because uh, April is Arbor Day, Earth Day, um, and a couple other uh, environmental days in between. Um, but there will be a, the annual cleanup on uh, Saturday, meeting at the high school at 9 o'clock. So if everyone can come out, scouts, you're welcome to show up um, and uh, uh, take an area of town and, and uh, clean up. We'll provide everything. Then at 11 o'clock, from 11 to 2, the Environmental Commission will be uh, hosting a, a fair, a green fair, uh, on Division Street, so this is something new. Um, they have a lot of insights and energy, and um, there'll be several displays and uh, plantings, and Girl Scouts will be there allowing people to plant, and just a whole bunch of different activities. So um, we welcome you to the Division Street for the Green Fair on, um, on Saturday at 11, from 11 to 2. Also going on is um, uh, tree planting. Um, we have an over, um, abundance of requests for street trees, more than we have a budget for. So perhaps we'll be looking for funding for that. Um, there, so, so if you need a street tree uh, or you're on the list, you may have to wait uh, until fall or next year. Um, then the uh, brook planting, we've got uh, about 100 and over 140 trees that we're gonna be planting through a grant that we received uh, with the state. Um, that's scheduled to take place in the next two weeks. So we're excited to be replacing uh, a lot of the old trees that have gone down uh, along the brook. And also the purpose is dual because it also um, absorb a lot of the moisture that we get from our flooding. So that's an, another piece. Uh, the community garden committee also met Saturday morning. Uh, I was down there Saturday um, and they uh, have expanded the garden. Uh, they, they got some donations. They're gonna put four more beds in which will bring them up to 16 beds but, get this, they have 40 applications for community garden beds. So there will be a lottery to decide who gets the 16, and um, we look forward to expansion of that program. Um, I think apartment living is, is impacting the, the need for it. Uh, and then the last thing is that on Saturday, uh, this past Saturday, after I went to the community garden, I came here because uh, uh, Somerville hosted the New Jersey Environmental Commission um, workshops. And uh, it was very engaging. Uh, people from all over the state representing their environmental commission with um, creative ideas, um, concerns about the environment, um, and it was educational and network involved as well. So it was uh, really something great. Uh, one new, new thing that I learned was that um, there's a lot of caution now with turf fields and the plastics that are in turf fields. So. Um, do your research if you're concerned. But uh, 
very busy time for the Environmental Commission. Sorry, Glenn wasn't here to give you that, but um, I think I did it justice. That you did. Very Thank good, you. Gina. Tom. Yes. Last week, the Fire Museum was visited by six classes of second graders from Vanderveer School. They asked perceptive questions and learned about the operation of the hand pumper and steamer, as well as, as fire prevention and safety. Many thanks to Rich O'Neill, Ron Chikowski, Tom Calabrese, Bobby Lynn, and Ashley Bowden, who led the uh, program. Also, thanks to Rick St. Pierre for donating the plastic fire helmets. That's it. Okay, thank you. Roger. This past week, uh, the fire department had the opportunity to walk through the new uh, emergency services building that is going up on Gaston, uh, Gaston Avenue, and it's, uh, it's quite a, a, a quite a sight to see for sure. Um, we know that um, it's it's going to be growing pains as we move in there, uh, both for the fire department and for the police department. Um, but uh, it is deceivingly larger on the inside than it looks on the outside. Um, but it was really a cool experience to walk through and see it as it's going up in construction. Um, the fire department is continuing its training um, that it's committed to to help the membership, and they're offering an ICS 200 class uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, and Saturday during the day uh, to get all of its members up to speed on the new state regulations. Um, and uh, there's just a lot going on uh, in, with, with the department. They went out uh, after the earthquake the other day and went through all the schools to ensure that everything was working with the buildings um, and, and keeping things moving. So we appreciate the work of the volunteers. And uh, tonight we have three of our volunteers that are going to be moving up in rank um, in a ceremony in a few moments. So we thank them for their, their hard work and their time away from their families, and we thank their families for being here tonight. Awesome. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, and then just two quick points. Um, on this past Saturday, I had the opportunity to attend a ribbon cutting for a home on Grove Street. Uh, it's a Raritan Valley Habitat for Humanity home. And it's what they called an honor build. And it was a home that was built specifically for a veteran, uh, a veteran who might not otherwise be able to afford a home uh, uh, on, on their own. So um, they, uh, they gather funds and uh, they look for donations and then they put uh, blood, sweat and tears into building a home. A uh, nice young man who, uh, who actually works for Somerset County in their, uh, I believe in their health department. Uh, he's an army veteran and uh, he closed on the home today. So he's a now proud homeowner in Somerville. And uh, it was just a very, very nice event. Um, beautiful home and uh, a welcome addition to, uh, to Somerville. And then also we had uh, SBI, Somerville Baseball, had their uh, uh, opening day uh, for, uh, for both baseball and softball. And I got to tell you, Carol Pager Park was absolutely filled with, uh, with young kids. And uh, it was great to see. Um, they've done something a little bit different. It's almost a travel team where they have um, uh, teams from a, a number of different municipalities, but they're all part of this league, so they play – uh, against each other, um, not only in Somerville, but in other towns as well. And uh, they had opening day here in Somerville, and uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of people, and uh, kids just having a blast and, and looking forward to playing, learning, and obviously snacks at the shack after the games, because that's the best part of it. So, um, And that's all I have. Um, at this point, we are going to have the oath of offices for, uh, for uh, three of our firefighters. And uh, this is always a, uh, a welcome time. Um, these are men who uh, have dedicated the better part of their lives to, uh, to making sure that all of us are safe. Um, they do it morning, noon, and night. They take time from their families. They take time from their work. Uh, they take time from their, uh, their, their, their own personal leisure time. And when that alarm bell rings, uh, these are the, uh, the men and women you want knocking down your door to make sure that you're safe. So days like this, um, uh, evenings like this are welcome. Their families are here with them. Uh, I think it's very important that our community understand that, uh, that our fire department uh, remains all volunteer. I don't think people understand that uh, until they have the need. And uh, when that bell rings, uh, no matter what emergency you're in, you want somebody racing to you. And our emergency services are second to none. Our fire department is the envy of departments uh, all over the county. 
And uh, these, these fine men uh, carry on a, a long-standing tradition. How many years, Rich, now for the fire department? 1835. And there's a lot of the same names from 1835 still today. So um, I think it's just a wonderful thing. Um, the council is proud of, uh, of all of you, of the department and of, of the three of you, um, and, uh, and your town is proud of you. So with that, um, the first oath of office will be to Chief Joseph P. Stitely. And I'd like to ask uh, Chief Stitely, or soon to be Chief Stitely, to please come up uh, with his family. Okay, next up, um, and I had a conversation with him over this, is uh, Deputy Chief Jose Rodriguez, otherwise known as Joe Rod, because that's how everybody knows him. And I'd like to ask his family to come up with him as well. Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the state of New Jersey. And the state of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States and in this state. The government the governments established in this state and in the United States. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. I do further solemnly swear. I do further solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. All the duties of deputy fire chief. All the duties of deputy fire chief for the borough of Somerville. For the borough of Somerville. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Okay, and next up we have Assistant Chief Brian Saponis with his family. Raise your right hand, Ricky, you have to move this. I state your name. I, Brian Saponis. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the state of New Jersey. And the state of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States and in this state. To the governments established in the United States and in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. I do further, further solemnly swear. I do further solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. 
that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform all the duties of assistant fire chief, all the duties of assistant fire chief for the borough of Somerville, for the borough of Somerville, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> So, so these are uh, fantastic memories you're creating, not only for yourselves and, and your family, but I think in particular for your children. And I think it was uh, wonderful that you brought your, uh, your children here so they can see exactly uh, what it is and how their parents make a commitment to a community. I think that's very important. So I want to thank you very much, every one of the, uh, the, new, the newly sworn in chiefs. Um, you're at a pivotal time in, uh, in Somerville's future. Uh, we have a new building coming online, and uh, you will be those officers that, uh, that handle the transition and, uh, and begin the implementation of uh, the, uh, the combined Somerville Fire Department. So thank you. You don't have to stay. You're welcome to leave, because we're going to be doing budgets now. <laughs> was, was that Kenny Bowden who said he wanted to stay? <laughs> Okay, all right, that's always a nice event. Um, item number eight on the agenda is the public hearing for the 2024 municipal budget. Uh, do we wanna have some discussion or overview on that first? Um, anybody wanna, no? Okay, so, so I, <laughs> well, I, very briefly, what I will tell you is that um, uh, we're, we're looking at, it's, it's about a half percent page, uh, half percent increase and on the average home, uh, the average homeowner, it means a $14 uh, increase. Um, I know uh, your uh, budget, right? Yeah. I, I know budget worked extremely hard along with uh, um, Roger, along with Paige and Kevin, uh, crunched the numbers as, as, uh, as they did. And uh, they came in with a very uh, sharpened budget. And... Uh, Paige was here, uh, I think, about a month ago, uh, giving the overview of the uh, the budget. So, uh, you know, obviously the goal is to maintain or enhance services while keeping the line uh, as best we can on uh, municipal taxes, and uh, and I think you've uh, you, you've achieved that. So, so thank you for the hard work. Um, and at this point, I will entertain a motion for uh, the uh, amending the municipal budget. Well, for, first we have to do, so this is a little complicated this year, Mayor. Okay. Um, when I say complicated, because we're, we're doing an amendment, but we have to have the public hearing on the budget that was presented. And then we have to do a resolution amending the municipal budget. So I've got to flip it. Okay. Yeah. All right. That so, is correct, right? All right. So okay. we're, okay. So it's the public hearing, then it's the amendment, then it's the final. Correct. Got it. Okay. So uh, I'll entertain a motion to open up the public hearing for the uh, 2024 municipal budget. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Vroom. Yes. All right, public hearing is now open. Hearing no public comment, I'll ask for a motion to, uh, to close the public session. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell, yes. Randy Pitts, yes. Gina Stravick, yes. Roger Verum. Yes. Okay. Just now, one thing I'd like to point out, Mayor, 
the $14 is, that's the municipal portion of the budget only, does not include school tax increase or county tax increase. That's correct. So. Um, all right, so now we have the amendment uh, to, the, to the budget. So let's, uh, let's get it on the table first. Uh, can we have a motion for the resolution to amend the budget? So moved. Second. Uh, discussion, roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Vroom. Yes. Okay. So can you give a brief explanation of what these amendments mean? Actually, if you could, sorry, just so so the microphone can pick you up. Okay. You're going to have to hit that microphone on too, Paige. It's got to be a red light. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, the, the amendment is just housekeeping. It was moving one line where the matching grants were inside the cap to outside the cap. That's... That was one of the things the state, when they reviewed our budget, <clears throat> they wanted us to do. The other um, thing that was amended on was uh, the parking revenue. We had, we had uh, parking deck fees, but we were putting all of the fees in one miscellaneous category, so they wanted us just to move that. It's just housekeeping. It, it didn't change any numbers in the budget. It was just moving it from one line to another. So budget, the, the overall budget didn't change. It was just the, the where in the line, where in the lines certain monies were appropriated. That's correct. Okay. All right. So it doesn't change the bottom line figures. That's correct. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? So the total general appropriations remain $30,017,284.30. That's correct. Okay. Roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. Gina Stravick? Yes. Roger Verm? Yes. Okay, item number 10 is the uh, municipal budget and user-friendly budget adoption. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. Gina Stravick? Yes. Roger Verm? Yes. Okay. Uh, That's it. That's it. Yeah. All good right. job. Thank you. Thanks for the good work. All right. Item number 11. Um, we have a presentation from an active current Life Scout who is in the quest for his Eagle Scout. So we have uh, young Mr. O'Neill. Uh, so why don't you come on up and uh, talk to us a little bit about what, uh, what you'd like to do. Are yeah, that's great. All right. Thank you. So my friend here is handing out a presentation I put together. First of all, I want to thank you, Mayor Gallagher, and the council for having me speak today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So my project will be John Schwab Park. Uh, if you don't know where that is, it is right off of Cliff Street, and you can get to it by High Street as well. It's right next to the apartment buildings. And uh, it's very uh, quintessential to our troop. We spend a lot of meetings there, outdoor meetings during the summer. We would go build a fire in a little pit, work on our skills that we could do outside. And uh, recently, since Ida, it was destroyed, and we haven't really been able to go there. There's not much to do there. And, like, it kind of just, like, with John Schwab, like, we want to honor him with this, with this park. And he, he was quintessential to our troop in building this troop. And uh, just, like, he really brought this troop together, and really what it is now is because of him. And that memorial there, we really stand by it to our troop, and we kind of think of it as our park to maintain and we Thanks. kind of failed it. But uh, as you can see on the first picture, right there on the bottom, I took pictures yesterday, is what it currently looks like. And in the picture above, you could sort of see what it looked like before. Very luscious bushes around it. The, the pavers weren't as weeded and uh, the stone was much cleaner. I don't think anybody knew there were pavers there. No, <laughs> no one knew there were pavers yeah. there. And then on the next, on the next little uh, paper is kind of the importance of it. I kind of went over like how like how much Joshua means to us and like how important he is to this troop so, and how we like aim to like kind of re-honor him with this project. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, digging out all the weeds in between the paver stones, putting new sand in between the paver stones, and uh, placing uh, new shrubbery around the flag, kind of like a, a half circle around the flag. 
and that's going to be a waterproof, not waterproof, but uh, <laughs> yeah. she told me not to say waterproof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's in the flood plain, like bushes that will be able to like suck up water and be able to like survive and thrive in that water area. And I, I chose evergreen uh, boxwoods. I'm not sure if you know much about them, but yes. they're, they'll stay green throughout the winter. They're not much hassle, just yeah. a little bit of cleaning up. Uh, and then I was going to install a solar power light on top of the flag. Yes. There is no flag there right now, but we would install a flag and then install a light on top of it so it would always shine down. It would meet the requirements that it would, it's able to fly during the night. And uh, I also, Troop 83 has like a little thing of adding like a bench to each project and I decided to spice it up a little bit and add two Adirondack chairs just because it also adds like I John, love that. John Schwab, like yeah. his idea of like bo like how much he means to us with Boy Scouting. I mean, like you think camping, you think camping chair, can't really put a camping chair yeah. there. Adirondack chair is the closest That's thing you get That's a great to. idea. I love that. And so I was going to put two and uh, have them cemented down yeah. and I talked to Mr. Hadley about it and how that would work and he recommended the cement Good. footing there. And then on the next slide, kind of my little sketch of the vision of what it might look like. You could see the, uh, it would be Adirondack chairs on both sides. I would also, we, we would also power wash the plaque, clean it up, shine it up, because it's also very dirty right now. And uh, the solar power lay on the top. New rope for the flag. I looked at it yesterday, it's pretty worn. And uh, that's, the, that's the goal of what it's going to look like. And then the nuts and bolts of it, just like the, the main stuff of the project, I just included a picture of what the light would look like on top of the flag, the Adirondack chair idea. My uncle is actually making me a plan, and I'm going to build it myself. We're not using a kit. And uh, that's the uh, boxwood evergreen that we're planning on using. Any questions about it? That's fantastic. All right. And I think the idea of Adirondack, Adirondack chairs there, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. uh, that's very creative, and, and, and I think it's a really nice addition. It's going to be a very nice look mm -hmm. for that part of the park. Um, and, and I love the idea that you're kind of resurrecting it because it, after Ida, it, um, well, it was overgrown. It, yeah. it, it, uh, it, was, it was very, very overgrown, and Ida took care of that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, I think uh, regenerating it and bringing it back to, uh, you know, to, to how it was envisioned to be originally mm -hmm. and then adding your, uh, your what would you say, your spice? Yeah, spice, yeah. It up a little bit, yeah. <laughs> spice it up a little bit. I think that's awesome. Thank you. So I think it's a fantastic project. Anybody, anything from council? I just want to mention that uh, John Schaub, he, he was scoutmaster of Troop 83 for 47 years and he put in some additional years as assistant scoutmaster, so he so he served the community for over 50 years, and uh, I just I think that that is a remarkable service. That's great. Uh, so you're working with Mr. Hadley? Yeah. I, okay. I have to go back get a signature. I talked to them before about like the project, and before I came here, I want to make sure that he thought it was okay. Yes. And he gave me the, the go-ahead to come here, and I'm going to go back, talk with him again, get okay. a signature on it. Sean, maybe you could spice it up one more way and put a little wood burning in there, Troop 83, or something like that. Yeah, uh, we actually plan on adopting the park after I'm done with it, so they'll right. always come back, clean it up, make sure it stays in shape, so you don't have to worry about it overgrowing again. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Good stuff. Thank you. I think it's a great project. Um, I wish you success. Uh, if you need anything else from, uh, from, from us or from the borough, uh, just reach out. Let All us right. know. You know where to find me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Great job. Okay. Um, item number 12. Now, Scouts, you don't have to stay. I th actually, I think you do have to stay, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a choice. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> um, it's part of a, a badge you're working on? Is that... Awesome. All right. Good. Pay attention. There's going to be a test afterwards. <laughs> All right. Um, next up is uh, discussion. We received a, uh, a communication from the Historic Advisory Committee um, requesting that uh, we create the, an ordinance authorizing the, the, the uh, Historic Advisory Committee as a standing committee of the borough, really not changing who they are or what they are, but really formalizing that they are a standing committee uh, of, the, uh, of the borough. Um, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to read 
the, uh, the, the proposed ordinance that they put forward. I read through it, other than a couple of uh, typos and slight word changes, I had no issue with it. And, and uh, you know, I, I think it probably should be. You know, the history of the borough has taken on a, a, a big prominence um, that, uh, that, that warrants, you know, an active participation by historic uh, with, uh, with not only the council but the planning board as well. And uh, does anybody else have any, any issues, any? I just want to say, frankly, that uh, you know, I've been liaison to the historic uh, advisory committee for as long as I've been on the council. And I only recently found out, <coughs> excuse me, I only recently found out that it wasn't a standing committee. They've been reestablished every year, do excellent work for the town. Uh, they, uh, they were very instrumental in getting Borough Hall listed on the National Register of Historic Places. They were very uh, helpful in getting the uh, uh, listing for the fire museum as well. And uh, uh, they, they run events every, every year. Uh, we have our uh, weekend journey event in October. Uh, and occasional events at Wallace House and Old Judge Parsonage. And they do a lot. They do a lot. They, they, they do a lot. <laughs> we have, we have uh, uh, we, we have a member of the committee here. I don't know if he wants to uh, speak to us or not. Uh, Jim? Uh, if you go up to the microphone, Jim. And just state your name and address for the record, please. Jim Somerville, 270 Garrison Road, Bridgewater. Uh, echoing what Tom said, um, the Historic Advisory Committee is instrumental in keeping the history of Somerville alive, ever, ever, ever evergreen, so that uh, the townspeople can be more mindful of it. And this is uh, an association also with the Somerville Public Library and uh, in the New Jersey room there. So um, I, I certainly agree with uh, town and you, Mayor. So I say yes, go, 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 go for it. <laughs> and I think we will. I just have two questions. Sure. So just in terms of structure, it, it's not, the committee isn't state mandated? Uh, no, no. And then what's its current status? What, it's just an it's ad, more, it's ad, an ad hoc. hoc. Yeah, it's, it, and to be quite honest, I didn't even realize that it was ad hoc because it, it was just one of those that you would always just, it, it, it needed to be there. Mm -hmm. So this just formalizes it by ordinance in case some somebody rogue in the future decides they don't want it. This way they, uh, it's there. Certainly have my support. Yep. Thank you. Um, all right, so Kevin, let's put that on the agenda for uh, ordinance introduction at the next meeting. I'll just get you my, uh, just a couple of typos, nothing, sure. nothing of substance. All right, at this point, we'll open up the meeting to the public. Um, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Uh, ro roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yeah. Randy Pitts. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Verm. Yes. Okay. Uh, public session is now open. Please state your name and address for the record, and please address your comments to me. Yes, please step up to the microphone. May I sit? Uh, yes. Sit? Yeah, you can sit if you need to. Very appreciated. Thank you. I'm sure the red light is on on the microphone. Um, it appears to be. Yes, it's on. Uh, my name is Celine Greaves. Um, I am a resident of Somerville at 97 East Spring Street. And um, I appreciate you letting me speak and your patience with my nerves. Um, okay, I have a couple of questions. Uh, this is um, a comment period. Co a comment period? I'm it's so sorry. It's a comment period. Where would, then when would I have you, you, public questions? This is comment the, on the things This that is public asking. comment period. You are allowed to make public comments. Um, and, and you can state those however you wish. Okay. Um, so is there, is there a question period Tom? at the end of the meeting? Excuse me? Is there a question period at the end of the meeting? No, there is no Q&A. This is a, an ability for the public to come gotcha. and comment on the policies of the governing body. Okay. All right. Um, let me do this the best I can then. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a comment 
um, pointing out that there has not been um, public mention at meetings, um, that there is an appeal, um, multiple appeals that have been made um, about the um, different aspects of um, the gun store before it was opened um, in town and since it has opened. Um, I would like to make a public comment that I see that um, Mr. John Maselli is um, being given a payment today and my understanding is that he has left. There has not been any um, mention of who is going to either be um, the new zoning officer or who is going to be acting in the capacity that the zoning officer um, in, in which they work and if someone's gonna be taking over some of those um, some of those jobs that he does, that in what capacity are they going to be acting? Is it gonna be um, what role that is? There's been some concerns and confusion about that. There's additionally, um, there is not a standard and clear procedure for making appeals or doing anything like that on the um, borough website available to any um, residents who ask for that information. Um, you know, there's, uh, there are um, regulations, but there is not, um, the paperwork does not exist. The paperwork to make those appeals has been um, created ad hoc. Um, and so the entire process to um, do that, there's no standardization and there's no transparency with um, residents for people to be able to do that. Um, my other observation is that there seems to be um, a variety in how long it takes some stores to open. And uh, my observation is that there was a tremendous haste with this particular gun store. And um, I think everything else at this moment is, can't be put into anything other than a question. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other public comment? Megan Andrews, 12 Walnut Street. Um, I wanted to thank you, Mayor, for calling me back last night, and I'm sorry I wasn't available to talk then or at 6 o'clock this morning. I'm a single, busy mom. I'm sure you understand. I do. Um, I, I do need to comment that it does appear that the rules of order change on a whim in these council meetings. I have witnessed questions and answers back and forth, sometimes, sometimes not. So I believe my neighbor uh, who just spoke had reason to believe that answers could be provided. So uh, I, I worked for a number of educational leadership organizations and we can't figure out what rules of order these meetings follow. Uh, you know, there's Daniels, there's a few different ones, but it's to, if you want the uh, public to, um, excuse me, be involved, I'm not seeing any consistency and the transparency doesn't seem to be there. Um, the fact is that since December of 2023, uh, you, other board members uh, were talked to, uh, residents did speak to you guys about their concerns and at no point from then through the lawsuit did anybody ever mention to the residents, oh, there was an appeal process. There is an appeal process. All we were told was nothing can be done. And again, as somebody who taught a lot of student leaders, I was really disappointed in hearing how you presented that. It, it really kind of, you say you want people to come and talk, but then before anybody said anything, you're like, nothing we can do, nothing we can do, when in fact, there was an appeal process. Um, it does appear that this gun store happened like that. It felt shady. The first time I was here and spoke, I said when I looked stuff online about it, it looked suspicious. Nothing has changed. It's just gotten more bizarre. 
um, including this um, sporting goods zoning when it's clear the only sport they're interested in is hunting humans. Um, there are so many residents who want to be here. There are so many residents who wanted to put their name on the lawsuit. They were too afraid because of who we're against, because those are the people with guns. And I'm not saying all people with guns are bad. None of this was ever about people owning guns. It was the specific location of the store. Had your interest in what so many of the community members felt been anywhere similar to the dispensary you clearly despise, we would have felt okay. We just, we would have been fine if it was open on 22. It was the location. But again, I want to stress, so many residents, including many business owners, are very uncomfortable with this. And we feel, and they're afraid to speak up. They're afraid for their name to be here. And I hope everybody here really understands that. As far as the minutes go, again, as a teacher, I'm sorry, and this is nothing against you, Mr. Sluka, at all. He shouldn't have to be running tech while doing his other job here. Can we get an intern? I mean, this is, and it's been, we've only had one set of minutes published since January 16th. The February 5th aren't published. The February 20th aren't published. How do you expect? Sorry, no questions. I don't know how you can expect residents to stay involved and know what's going on when we have no access, when the meetings don't always have sound, don't always have video, and then we don't even have minutes. I cannot understand how minutes could be approved, why it would take two weeks to get up. It's literally boop, 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 boop. I, unless it's something different, I would love to know, and I have tried to find the answer to that, and nobody's answered exactly what is the problem here. I hear some of the delay was the audio. I've transcribed these meetings myself. I just don't see why it's taking so long, and I think the way Mr. Sluka's job, uh, what his tasks are, need to be looked at. And again, it's nothing against him, but it just it doesn't make sense to me. Um, this is a beautiful new space, but from where we are, if we're not here in the building, it's like we're in 1997, is how much communication we're getting out there. Um, I was very glad to see that the no stopping and standing sign between uh, the entrance exit on uh, William Street to the gun store strip mall has been put back up there because that was such a hazard not having it there. However, there used to be an exit sign at that opening to the lot, the entrance being on North Bridge. That sign came down during COVID, I assume because the delivery guys didn't like having to drive around, but it's still narrow. It should not be an entrance and an exit and it needs to be, to be looked at. Um, I guess my only other comment is I'm disappointed. I put a lot of money into my house last year and I was going to continue to do so because this is where I wanted to die. In many years, my family lives into their 90s. Um, and now I'm questioning that because we don't feel heard. Uh, we don't feel listened to, we feel blown off. And meanwhile, a lot of us are scared about our safety because in any group, there's a couple nuts. Unfortunately, with this specific group, those nuts have guns. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public comment? Sure. If you step up to the microphone, please. I'm going to sit so I don't break the screen. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, Dan Papuga, 67 Davenport Street. Uh, I got two things I want to say. I don't know if any of you guys have been by the middle school at drop off in the morning on Davenport Street, somebody there is gonna get killed and people are stop heading northbound. They're stopping letting kids out. Cars are going around them. It's not good. I've seen my road turn into two lanes northbound with 10 cars backed up at the intersection of High Street. It's Clep Street, sorry, one way. So that's one problem issue. Uh, the other one is 
I guess it's a question, but I don't know how else to frame it, or I guess I can. Uh, we need to have Davenport between Cliff and High Street made into residential parking only. There's you, 10 years ago, somebody dropped the church on us and we were basically prisoners in our house. You couldn't leave. So you come home on Saturday morning with a car full of groceries. All the spots in front of your house are taken up. Now you're schlepping from two blocks away. And now in the month or two, we're starting with the farmer's market on Saturdays. It's gonna be the same problem. We had discussions years ago with, I guess, various people around the town about it. And we were basically, told, oh, it's a destination thing. Like we can't do it, but you know, it's a destination for some people, but there's people that pay property taxes and a lot of it based on our square footage that are basically held hostage. Yesterday, like Saturday nights now, Friday nights, Sunday mornings, Saturday mornings for brunch. It's a crapshoot if you leave your house that you'll come home and like came home a couple weeks ago with like 10 bags of mulch in the car and I had to park a block away because that was the only thing. That was the only spot. So I don't know who this got to get routed to, but like something's got to be done before people start getting angry. I guess the best way to put it because the frustration levels Understood. on the whole street are going through the roof. Thank you. All right, that's it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other public comment? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to close public session. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yeah. Randy Pitts. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Verm. Yes. All right, so there was a whole lot that went on over the course of the last three. I'm going to start with uh, the gentleman first. Um, so Davenport Street, yes, I agree. It's, it's a problem. Um, I know the, the church, St. Thomas, has an arrangement with the Board of Ed where they can park, their parishioners can park. Uh, it was uh, Church. Yeah, I, I know, I know. So, so um, I believe they're gone now. Um, so that should create a little bit of a, a, a buffer. Um, I do understand that the farmer's market may create an impact uh, as well. And that's something we're going to have to monitor. What I am doing is, is I have a, uh, a pedestrian, uh, I call it a safety committee, being formed. And, and I'm going to put that on the list of things for them to tackle. Um, I'm not adverse to residential parking on that street. Um, I think it's something we can look at. Uh, I think it's something that, uh, you know, because nobody has driveways on that stretch of Davenport. Nobody. And, uh, you know, I jog by there and I, I see the problems. It's, it's bumper to bumper. It's, uh, it, it's tight. It's tough. So I think that's something we can take a look at. Um, I'm going to address very, just, just very broadly some of the statements that were made uh, by the previous two uh, uh, folks. Um, you know, I... You say there's no transparency. Uh, I would disagree, and I think everybody up at this table would absolutely disagree with that. Um, the transparency that this governing body has is extreme. Um, my, I came in January 1, and Mr. Sluka will bear this out. Uh, my mantra is, I don't believe in customer service. I believe in over-customer service. And, and that means bending over backwards for the public. Um, sometimes when folks don't get the answers that they like, they feel that, uh, that they're not getting the answers that they should. And that may not necessarily be in your case, uh, but that is, that's the reality of it sometimes. Um, coming in on January 1, uh, faced with a number of challenges, this issue being one of them, I was very transparent about how we're going to proceed forward. Um, this governing body and the planning board were delayed probably by about a month and a half. Uh, otherwise, we'd probably have this issue uh, done, at least in terms of, uh, of, of taking a look at the zoning. Uh, how that's going to pan out, I can't tell you, but because uh, that's, that's really up, up ultimately to the governing body and the planning board to make a recommendation. But uh, the delays uh, were not due to the governing body. It was due to a, uh, a civil action being filed in court, and that is what delayed. Um, so, well, you, you, your, your comment period is over. Um, I'm trying to address them from our perspective and, uh, and let you know where we're at. 
Um, Mr. Sluka uh, has bent over backwards to try to provide information. Um, he keeps me apprised of, of everything that comes in. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and he has made attempts to try, probably gave, uh, uh, he's made attempts to comply with everything that has been put before him. Uh, and I know that. He works extremely hard, he's extremely diligent, and he does his job very, very well. Um, and uh, uh, he's stretched thin at times, um, and that's because right now uh, we're being faced with uh, an onslaught of OPA requests, which are fine. Uh, we'll comply with all of those OPA requests, and and that's okay. Um, but you know his his time gets stretched thin, and uh, in in fact we're actually hiring somebody whose part of their duty will be to uh, help comply with those uh, OPA requests, um, and that's fine. Um, sometimes it does take just a a quick reach out to to get some answers. You sent me an email last night at about six thirty, and I think within thirty seconds of getting that email. Uh, I was on the phone uh, to you and, and tried to make contact to give you some answers that, uh, um, that I had at that time. Uh, that didn't work out. I believe Mr. Saluka did respond with, uh, with some additional answers. So, you know, we, we do uh, absolutely try to, uh, to be completely transparent, uh, and we will continue to do so, uh, whether it's this issue or any other issue. Um, that's what we do. Um, In terms of the minutes, uh, Mr. Sluka just explained we did have some hiccups from a technology standpoint. You're right; it's frustrating uh, for me as well. Um, you know, we we really have not had an issue with with uh, delay of minutes, and uh, and we are because we're in a new space. It's a brand new space. We were in the old space probably for about 40 years, and there's a pattern of how you get things done, and that pattern has now changed. And we've had some technology issues. The tech folks were in here probably for about an hour just before you came into this building and, and we're in trying to, uh, to resolve some of those issues. And you can see we're still having them. Um, I can tell you that after this meeting, um, we're gonna have a quick sit down and, and we're gonna get that fixed because it is frustrating. It's frustrating, I know for, for you as, as the public, uh, whoever is watching uh, on, on YouTube right now, uh, and, and it's frustrating for the governing body as well. It, it seems like it's something so simple, but sometimes those simple things are not so simple. Uh, we have been very, very thorough in our ability to get minutes done on a very timely basis, and that will continue. Um, as far as the rules of order changing, uh, I've been doing this for over 20 years. And I can tell you the rules of order have not changed. Anybody can come up. They can, they can uh, make any statement they want in the form they want. But it is a comment period. It is not a period to engage in back and forth. It's an ability for the public to come in and let us know how you feel. That's what the public comment period is. It's not an interrogation. It's a, not a why did you do this, why did you do that. Um, it's, it's an ability for you to express frustration. Uh, to express gratitude, to express support, to express whatever you feel on any issue as it, as it affects you as a uh, taxpayer in Somerville, uh, you as a resident, um, and, and that's okay. Um, the, what I don't stand for, uh, what I don't like, is that when folks say to the borough council, you don't know what you're doing, when they say to the planning board, you don't know what you're doing, when you say to the zoning board, you don't know what you're doing. These are volunteers who are appointed by this governing body or elected to uh, these seats. And it's, it's a little disheartening when you, know, you have good people who volunteer all of their time, all of their energy, uh, to make this town uh, the best it can be. And we have an issue that has come to the surface where we have folks now castigating folks in these positions. And whether that's at Borough Hall, because I've heard people go after people at Borough Hall, um, this is when I start to step in and I start to take offense at that. I can take the shots, I'm a big boy, I've been doing this a long time. Um, but when, when folks come after uh, the employees in Borough Hall, I got a problem with that. When they start coming after the council members here, I got a problem with that. 
When they come after the planning board members, I got a problem with that. When they come after the zoning board members, I got a problem with that. And then when on social media, when they start coming after your families, I got a big problem with that. So, you know, I, I would just ask everybody, whether it's this issue or any other issue, take a step back. Um, you'll find that this is an engaged crowd here. Um, we listen. We try to do what's right. You may not always agree with what we do or how we do it, but all of those boards, all of those bodies, and all of Borough Hall are trying to do the best we can. Um, I think I'm done. So uh, with that, let's go on to consent resolutions. We have two additions, uh, which we will add on at the back end. It's 136 and 137. Are there any that anybody would like to have pulled off? Uh, 36 and 37 we'll take as separate because they are walk-ons. All right. Uh, number 129 is awarding a contract to SNL Contractors for North Auton Avenue Reconstruction and Drainage Improvements Project. 130 is authorizing the sale or disposition of borough-owned books in accordance with uh, statute as noted. 131, approving change order number two to a contract with American Asphalt and Trucking for 2022 road improvement program for $65,949.71 for a new contract amount of $797,417. 132 is authorizing final payment for the time accumulated for John Maselli in the amount of $5,331.29. 133 is authorizing the placement of a handicapped parking space on Cammon Place. 134 is approving the hiring of Wayne Paley as a part-time building subcode official Building Inspector, effective April 22nd, 2024. 135 is awarding a contract with AA Berms for 2022 CDBG curb ramps for the Borough of Somerville, Somerset County, New Jersey, in the total amount of $93,700. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Yeah. Randy Pitts. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Vroom. Yes. All right, resolution uh, 136 is supporting Senate uh, bill number 725 concerning unlawful occupancy of dwellings and supplementing Title 2C of the New Jersey Statutes of the State of New Jersey. I don't know that we have this problem as of yet, but it is a growing problem uh, within the state in many municipalities, and uh, uh, this, the uh, legislature is looking to uh, uh, put some uh, teeth behind some new legislation which will curtail that. Uh, do we have a motion for? So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Vroom. Yes. All right, 137 is authorizing the grant application to New Jersey Department of Community Affairs for $100,000 for athletic courts improvement project. Uh, this is a walk-on. Uh, Jason Kraska, the, uh, the chair of the uh, rec committee, uh, brought this to our attention. Uh, the, uh, the application is due, I believe, tomorrow, so we needed to get this on uh, tonight. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Firm. Yes. All right, bills and vouchers. I make a motion to uh, approve bills and vouchers in the amount of $1,083,366.16. Second. Do okay. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Oh, I'm sorry. Discussion? Roll call. Sorry. Council members, Teresa Bonner. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Firm. Yes. Okay. Motion for adjournment. Tom? So moved. So moved. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This meeting is adjourned.